Hello and welcome to The Exchange, the programme where we invite leaders in their field to exchange their thoughts on an everyday issue that affects us all. I'm Rob Buckingham and my co-host on The Exchange is my wife, Christy. Hi, I am so looking forward to today's show where we will be discussing the growing issue of homelessness. How should we respond to people who are, who are homeless and what are the ways we can practically help? To discuss this topic, we're joined by Rudy Gonzalez, the Executive Director of Lighthouse Institute. Rudy has a wealth of experience in working with youth homelessness. The Institute informs best practice approaches to breaking the cycle of homelessness. Welcome, Rudy. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. We're also joined by Hanover's Chief Executive, Tony Keenan. Hanover provides support for people experiencing a housing crisis or homelessness. Welcome, Tony. Thanks for having me, Christine. Looking forward to the conversation, but before we start, let's take a look at this. On any given night in Australia, one in 200 people are said to be homeless. That's a sobering thought. That's more than the capacity of the MCG. Sadly, a large number of these people find themselves in this situation through no fault of their own, be it family breakdown, mental health issues, or just finding themselves in tough times. How are we supposed to respond to homelessness in our own backyard? Well, a very serious topic and, uh, and one that we're hoping that we can give hope to uh, on the exchange today. Let's start off uh, with both of you gentlemen defining for us exactly what homelessness is. Well, Australia is one of the only countries that actually counts homelessness in the census and we define, I guess the term is primary homelessness, that's people who are actually out in the open with no shelter. Secondary homeless would be someone staying in a service like ours or Rudy's or couch surfing, a night here with a friend, a night there. And then tertiary homelessness, which is people living in some form of housing, but it's so substandard, it's so overcrowded or no access to cooking facilities that you would be considered homelessness. Okay. So it's not really desirable accommodation? It's accommodation that's dangerous, that c can cause harm. Right. Um, or it's unsafe. I think that's probably a good mm. way to describe it, Rudy. Yeah, I agree. I think it's accommodation that's unsafe, and I guess it's not a you don't get a sense of belonging be there, being there. It's, it's just um, basically someone to, to sleep for the night. Yeah, and it's yeah. basically not not the sort of place that you would want someone from your family to live in. No, really. Tell us, Rudy, what does a Lighthouse actually do? Okay, we've got two parts to Lighthouse. We've got the Lighthouse Foundation, which is um, the care side. Um, so we provide long-term therapeutic care for homeless young people. Now, by therapeutic care, because I know what that means, but everybody else <laughs> might not, can you just give us a little bit of a... Yeah. Basically, what we provide is a home-like environment for young people that have histories of complex trauma, so long-term abuse and neglect, who find themselves homeless. Um, so we try and provide a, a, a family environment yeah, try and make it look like the sort of homes that we might live in, yes. where there's care, where there's love, where they come home to a nice cooked meal, where they feel like they're cared for. Um, so we do that through a model called the therapeutic family model of care, um, where we have carers who actually live with the young people and act almost as surrogate parents. Um, attached to that we have psychologists, um, social workers and other practitioners who provide sort of the clinical aspects of the role because... Because it's not just providing them a bed because most of these people have gone through very real hardships and they need the psychological backup. Exactly. So if you look at the young people we work with, they come to us at 15 to 22 years of age. We're talking about 15 to 22 years of trauma. Yeah. of abuse, of, mm -hmm. ne of neglect, of actually living on the streets. The actual experience of homelessness is trauma in itself. So there's a lot of healing that needs to happen. So we make sure we wrap around around the young people a lot of supports, um, but also we link, link them to the wider community as well through what we call community communities that are a group of volunteers from the local community that build that integration with the wider community. That's wonderful. Um, then we have the Lighthouse Institute, which is basically the learnings that have come from 21 years of doing that work. Um, we share that approach with other organisations through training, consultancy and research. So that's the Lighthouse Institute where I yeah, work. Wonderful, doing a great job. Absolutely. Tony, currently this is a, a pretty staggering statistic. One in 200 people in Australia are homeless. Where are we failing as a society? Look, it, it's probably Where needs the start? whole show <laughs> to answer. Yeah, yeah. But look, a couple of things. The most basic thing is there's an incredible housing shortage in this country. Just 
in Victoria alone there are 45,000 people on the waiting list for public housing. Uh, we turn away nine out of ten requests for accommodation. Um, people can't get housing. Our own staff find it hard to get housing. Mm. So the irony is that you know we've got staff who work in homelessness who are now finding it difficult to find housing. So the absolute fundamental thing is the lack of affordable housing across the country. Then you have other things. I mean, there's been a lot of changes over the last 30, 40 years. Um, a lot of them have been good changes, such as deinstitutionalisation, so closing down the big psychiatric institutions. But what we didn't really do is replace it with another option. A friend of mine says, we closed down the institutes and the policy response was the number 16 tram. So we've had a lot of, so increasingly you see in our services and in public housing more and more people with complex issues. So people who maybe 20, 30 years ago would have been in a psychiatric institution. Uh, so it's great that they're not in those institutional settings, yes. but we haven't come up with a model of support to help those people stay well mm. and stay housed. Mm. Yeah. What would you say are the main reasons for homelessness? Look, it's like you were saying, it's a, it's a very complex issue and there's a lot of diversity in the homelessness population as well. Um, the work that we do um, with young homeless people is, you know, the 15 to 22 year olds is that a lot of them actually come out of state care. So uh, you talked about some of the statistics there around homelessness. That's not even counting the 38,000, you know, kids that are in state care across Australia. Um, who in some, ha in some ways don't have a home to go to either. Um, so a lot of those kids, something like 50% of those kids will go into homelessness coming out of state care. So is that large because state care is actually not preparing them for their future or how does that work? Yeah, there's a number of issues there. The, the state care ends at 16 to 18 years of age. Most of the kids will leave state care at 16 years of age with very limited um, transition plans to go into um, adulthood. Um, so that's a problem. Um, there's also a, a system that's quite outdated, but it is starting to change now. There is a lot of policy um, development at the moment where we're starting to see the introduction of more therapeutic care and, and trauma-informed care that's more around tr treating the, you know, healing the trauma mm. of these young people. Mm. Oh, that's wonderful news. It's good to see that there's some, some positive yeah, yeah. things I mean, happening. The average middle-class kid nowadays is with their parents till their mid-twenties. Mm emotionally and financially. Very few young people are able to leave home at 17 or 18, yet we expect those kids who've been abused, grown up in care, to at 18 all of a sudden be able to stand on their feet and find their way through the world. Mm. And at the moment, sadly, the main option we're offering is prison. Um, and, you know, the statistics bear that up. So we have to come up with another option. Yeah. Most of us, our 17, 18 year olds, wouldn't fend for themselves. You know, my friends laugh at the thought of their 18 year old finding a house, paying bills, earning an yeah. income, navigating all of that. So these are yeah. kids that have grown up in a loving family with skills and an education. To expect that a young person who's been had a ch life of abuse, grown up in state care, and then at 18, where their first yeah. presentation is that our adult crisis centre is going to navigate their way through its nuts. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Now, so the majority of homeless people are aged between 25 and 34. Is there a reason for that age group? Yeah, look, I think we've touched on it. I think the, well, the huge number of kids who are growing up in care and the number, I mean, it's doubled in the last decade. Um, so that's one of the big drivers some of the economic changes that have happened. Um, so when I was young, you know, I think I was one of three kids in the year 12 that went to university. Kids got jobs and apprenticeships mm. and you could realistically expect to leave school at year 12 and get a really good job. Mm. You know, these kids, a lot of them have disengaged from school at year 10 and we know that having year 12 won't guarantee you a job now, you pretty no, much right. have to have a degree. Yeah. So I think that's some of the drivers. Yeah. Um, people like to go to drug and alcohol as a driver but the research actually shows that homelessness is a causer of 
drug and alcohol okay, so in many cases, around. not the other way around. So yeah, maybe we're typecasting um, homeless people. We'll pick that up yeah. Yeah. when we come back. We need to take a break, but we'll be back soon with more discussion on The Exchange. Welcome back to The Exchange. We're having a great discussion with Rudy Gonzalez and Tony Keenan about homelessness in our own backyard. Yes, and there's certainly plenty of it. We talked a little bit uh, about stereotypical when we think of homelessness. How wrong or how right are we on that? Give us some ideas of how the breadth of homelessness. Well, we know we've done three national polls now and it still shows the typical Australian, if you ask them who's homeless, they'll say a middle-aged bloke with a drinking problem. Now, at our service last year, we saw six and a half thousand clients. Uh, the majority were women of adult clients, but of those clients, um, Two and a half thousand were kids, and of the kids, 50% were under the age of five. So, for us, the typical homeless person's a mum with kids, and the kids will likely be five or under. Wow. And is that as a result of domestic violence, abuse? Predominantly, relationship breakdown, domestic violence is the biggest driver, but also just straight out issues of poverty, mm. being evicted from the house. And, and the really big driver is a lack of connections. I mean, any of us here could lose a job, become broke, get a drug and alcohol problem, we wouldn't become homeless mm. because we've got family and friends we can fall back on. Our path to homelessness would take a lot long time. We'd have to burn a few bridges mm. before we got there. But if you have no connections, you go from a crisis to homelessness very quickly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that your own experience as well, Rudy? Yeah, our experience as well. We, I think probably 20 years ago, the homelessness group was quite different and what we're starting to see now is quite quite a lot of diversity with working with people from different cultural backgrounds we're working with um, people that come from different socio-economic backgrounds as well you know you, you are seeing a, a rise I think of a middle-class poverty as well it sounds like a, a funny yeah. thing to say but we are seeing kids that are homeless now that come from middle class backgrounds as well um, because of the pressures um, that are in the home in terms of high mortgages and you know family members losing jobs and things like that. So the homelessness population is quite different now to what it might have been 20 years ago. Um, we were talking earlier and you mentioned about children actually being born into homelessness. How, do, how does that work? Yeah, well last year 12 percent of our child clients were born at Hanover which means their mum was homeless and turned up pregnant and the children were born whilst they were staying with us mm. so um, yeah I mean that that's a newish trend it's not a trend we're that happy about no absolutely but, yeah. mm. just before we go to street talk are we are we compassionate enough as Australians to this issue mm. look I, I can give you a bit of background to our organization our, our organization was built through private funding um, so we we get a lot of our funding through, through philanthropy, through corporate funders, and also from government as well. So we believe that people are, are wanting to help. They're wanting to put money um, in there to, to support young people in particular. Um, and there's also a lot of interest we're finding from the corporate sector where they're saying, we'd like to back you dollar for yep. dollar with government. So if wonderful. government is willing that's to put wonderful. in a dollar, we would be willing to put in a dollar. And I think that's a way of the future. Yeah. Really. Mm. Oh, no, that's tremendous. Well, you've heard from our experts. Let's hear what the people on the streets have to say. What sort of people do you think are homeless? Um, I think people that, it could be anyone really, could be people that slip through the cracks. Uh, Sadly, it tends to be people with mental illness, I think, as well. People who were generally, uh, who did it out of choice, till I actually met and spoke to a few people and found out that they had actually, they were stuck in a rut, so, uh, and they didn't have the confidence to get out of it. People have had tough lives, I guess, that have gone through, yeah, tough circumstances, who haven't really had the opportunities that everyone else has had, I guess. People that don't have a job um, or family, um, people that have reached the end of their tether, um, maybe have mental issues. Well, I sort of see the people that um, are out of work, I guess, and uh, can't find jobs. Uh, they've hit hard times in life, perhaps, and uh, 
You know, you see them around the streets. I've noticed more down here in Melbourne than we have in Sydney, but I don't get to the city much in Sydney, so I really don't know what's going on. I think it can be a range of people. It can be people that put themselves in different situations to, to do that themselves, or whether they've just fell on hard times, depending on whether it's financial, emotional, family life. And how do you react when you see a homeless person on the street? I feel sad. Well, firstly, I mean, it's, it's a sad thing for anyone to see, but I think I would be lying if I said I wasn't, you know, I didn't pretend to see some or all those things. You know, you try you try and have sympathy and stuff, but when it sometimes it'd be quite overwhelming when you see many walk past you and stuff. So. I do feel sorry for them, but I'm sort of torn between wanting to help them, but also sometimes you do feel like um, whether to give them money or food, which would be the the better of the two options, yeah. I think it's very sad to see this uh, in Australia, for, for instance, and uh, when I sort of see all the money going overseas to help the overseas aid, so to speak, uh, I think we should be putting the money at home to help those kids out. Do you think society is a bit indifferent to it? Oh, absolutely. I think even now you can see there's, I've seen a few people uh, come up and ask me for some change and a few of the people around here, and uh, some people just tend to not even look, you know, not even just kind of blanket completely and I think that's somewhat disturbing. I think people have a perception that homeless people are typically what you might see on the street and that might be just someone who's struggling a little bit so I think they assume that someone might be uh, using drugs or alcohol but the truth is that anyone can become homeless so sure. it's an easy enough thing to fall into and you might not actually be on the street there are a lot of support networks and a lot of places to stay out there so yeah. I think that people have an assumption that it's uh, related to like you know winos or smackies or something like that but the reality is that could be anyone, you know, someone that you know quite well could actually be homeless and you might not know it. Joining us now is Street Talk reporter Sandra Cavallo. Welcome, Sandra. Hi, how are you? Good. That was great, Sandra. How did you feel like they're talking to people about this subject? Quite torn, actually. Um, I felt everyone was, you know, sorry to hear about seeing someone who's homeless or sad about it. There was a level of sympathy, but what I really felt was that no one really know what to do about it. Mm -hmm. No one really know what's the best way to approach someone who's on the street, who's evidently homeless on the streets. Um, we're not talking about people who are obviously in, in the services that you're in, but you know, do I give them money? Do I just, you know, walk past them? There's a confusion as to what is the right response and I don't know if mm. you what, can What should you do, Tony? Look, we're often asked that and I'm no more expert on answering this than anyone else. Um, there are a couple of things. If someone's distressed or hurt themselves or f fallen over, call an ambulance. I mean, that's the obvious thing. Do you give someone money? Um, that's really up to you. Sometimes the money might be used for drugs and alcohol, sometimes it will be used for food. So I'm in no better position to answer that than anyone else. What would you personally do? I give sometimes and sometimes I don't. Right, okay. Yeah. And, and you? It's interesting. It's an interesting question because we obviously, when you work with homeless young people, a lot of people ask that question. Mm. Um, the way I look at it is, if my child was in that position, how would how would I want them to be treated? That's a great yeah. question. Yeah, that's, mm. great. That, that's what I would do. And for me, it was if I feel that that, that I can support them in some way, I do. Um, it might be about going for a meal with them rather than giving them money if you're concerned that it will go to drugs. Um, I learnt that from Susan Barton, the founder of Lighthouse Foundation, where I'd walk down the street and homeless people would come up to her and, and they'd say, can I have some money? And she'd say, I, I can't give you money, but how about we go for a coffee? Mm. Yeah, Wonderful. absolutely. And that might be a good way to and do it. One lady just mentioned, you know, they, they think that homeless people are doing it out of choice. And I think that's a remarkable statement. I mean, she obviously then spoke to people and noticed, oh, no, it's not out of choice. Mm. But how widespread is that perception that it's out of choice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The thing I'm most commonly asked at parties and, you know, it'll be, oh, but a lot of people do it out of choice. And, you know, I rack my brain. I can think of maybe one or two examples that, I'm, that you could maybe say, well, I guess there's an element of choice. But on the scheme of things we deal with, it, it's such a, it seems such a far-fetched question. I don't know why people go to that. Is there a way that. of handling it so that 
we don't actually engage so we think well we're giving them an element of choice i mean it's a ridiculous argument do you think it's a yeah. safety thing for the Who overwhelming who, who would actually yeah. choose to yeah. be homeless Look, putting on my psychology hat it could be yeah. some way of, of coping with the fact that these people yeah. are living in your community and you're yeah. not doing anything about it mm. so i mean definitely I, I worked in new york for a little while and i find the homelessness such a confronting Very issue confronting. Yeah. every single day mm. and i tried to do what i could but still feeling totally overwhelmed. It does. It is overwhelming, and, and I think that scares people, and that brings up defences, and, and what happens is denial. Yep. You know? mm. So denial makes us not have to deal with the actual problem. Mm. Sandra, thanks for popping in. Thank you. And uh, great stuff from the streets, as always. Back with more of The Exchange in just a moment. Welcome back to The Exchange. We're talking with Lighthouse Institute's Rudy Gonzalez and Hanover's Tony Keenan about homelessness and how we should respond. Tony, tell me, um, seeing the figures that we've seen today, listening to some of the stories, it's actually a bigger demographic than what we thought. What are some of the, the good things that are going on? How can we actually get involved with those and how can we make a difference? Look, there are a lot of wonderful programs and people doing great things. People can make a difference. People can donate to a whole range of organisations. People can make a commitment, like it's two bucks a week. Um, that's a really tangible way. Research the area. There's lots of people working in this field. Have a look and find one that you think fits with your values. That's one way. Volunteering. There are a lot of places serving meals. Uh, we ran a barbecue night at our centre. We have volunteers doing tutoring with young kids, catching up on schoolwork. There are a whole heap of ways that people can become involved. And each week we see, for every sad story, we see 10 good ones, 10 great outcomes. That's, that's, really that's good. wonderful. Yeah. That's what you're Rudy? I agree. And, and I, think, I think the starting point is your own family. You know, homelessness starts within your own home. You know, so it's around early intervention with families. Um, supporting our, our neighbour, supporting our community. Um, if we can prevent homelessness in the early stages, I think that's a way to go. In terms of programs, there, there is there is a lot of wonderful programs. You talked about your foyer um, programs, um, also our approach, which is that you know the therapeutic family model of care, where we're seeing huge, huge achievements in terms of outcomes for for young people across all their developmental domains. And also in terms that makes sense, that makes economic sense as well. Um, we recently conducted a study into our programs, the, the therapeutic care program at the Lighthouse Foundation. And we found that for every dollar invested in our programs, there's a $12 return on investment to the mm, community. Okay? So, so there, is, there is a lot of great programs, great outcomes. Um, we need to invest in the right programs and there needs to be an, e an evidence base behind it. Um, so getting a little bit smarter around what sort of programs we've found that, that they have good outcomes for the people that we work with. Yeah. The other thing you could do is challenge every time someone thinks it's okay to use homelessness as a joke. I mean, as comedians, it seems to be the only area that people use homeless, crack homeless jokes. And I see that from comedians. It's the one it's area tragic. that doesn't get challenged. You wouldn't mm -hmm. tell a racist joke. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not funny, and I mean, you don't need to do that to be funny, but it still seems to be the one area that comics seem to think and that it's OK to crack a joke about a homeless Just challenge person. that. And challenge and that. And the inappropriateness mm. yeah. of it. Yeah, well yeah. Done. yeah, Tony and Rudy, thank you so much for your mm. time today. Pleasure. We really appreciate what you do and what you've brought to the program. Yeah, thank, thank you. Very thank much. You. Please go to our website for a fact sheet on this topic, as well as more information about this show, The Exchange. We look forward to seeing you next time. See you soon.